Good morning and welcome back. Yesterday we made good progress in our project to build the honey bucket heater. Today we will finish the job by assembling the panels and installing the hardware. So let's get started in the beekeepers workshop. Let's recap what we did yesterday. We started by cutting the 1x4s to length. Then we made lap joints on the 1x4s. First we made the cheek cut on both ends of the boards and then completed the lap joint with the shoulder cut. Next we milled dados on the two boards that would be used for the front and back vertical frames. Then cut the 1x4s to the required one and one half inch width. On the bench, the frames were assembled by gluing and nailing. The shelf brackets were attached by also gluing and nailing. Quarter inch hardboard was cut to the size of the six frames and attached by glue and brads. Finally, foil face foam was used to line the inside of each panel. Assembling the box is pretty straightforward. I set up the panels on the base using that for square, clamp the sides, check to make sure everything is square, and then pre-drill for the screws. To screw the panels together, I'm using a two inch bugle headed screw. I am going to countersink the pilot holes. So the head of the screw will be flush with the panel. Once all the pilot holes are drilled and countersunk, it is just a simple matter of screwing the four sides together. We will hold off on the bottom until we get the light socket installed and the top will be attached using hinges. To install the top, use a couple of one and one half inch hinges on the back and a handle on the front. On the inside of the bucket heater, above the light bulb, we need to install an aluminum drip shield. It is important that you do not skip this step as any dripping honey or wax will shatter the bulb. The drip shield is 20 and 1 half inches long and about 6 inches wide. To install, turn the box upside down and screw to the bottom of the lower shelf bracket. Now that we have the drip shield in place, it is time to turn our attention to mounting the lamp base. On the bottom panel, two supports cut from a scrap 2x4 will hold the porcelain base. These supports are held back one inch from the edges to provide space for the side panels. All we need to do is to toenail the supports into the frame. Position the lamp base midway on the supports and temporarily screw it down. Later on, we will have to remove the base when we hook up the wiring. Now we are ready for the final wiring. To hook up the lamp base to the dimmer switch, follow this diagram. It's really simple. One wire on a two conductor cord will be cut and connected to the two wires coming from the dimmer switch. The other wire on the cord will be left intact. And it doesn't matter which wire you use for either side. Let's take a moment to talk about the wire itself. Being the pack rat that I am, I always save the cord from any discarded electrical appliance. You never know when you might need a cord. 
such as for this project. If you don't have a cord to use, you can simply make one up from wiring bought at your local hardware store. Better yet, buy an extension cord and cut off the receptacle end. You will be money ahead. After we have screwed the bottom panel to the sides, we are ready to hook up the light and dimmer switch. For these next steps, you might find it easier if you remove the front panel while you work inside the box. Drill a small hole at the bottom of the back panel. Make the hole big enough for whatever cord you're going to use. To prepare the extension cord, first cut off the receptacle end. Then split the end about four inches. Okay. And strip about three quarters of an inch of insulation from each wire. Okay. Pass the cord from the back side through the hole you just drilled and pull from the inside to give you enough wire to work with. Okay. Hook up the two wires from the cord to each of the two connections on the bottom of the lamp base. And screw the base back in place. Finally, Use a harness to secure the wire near the exit hole to keep the wire from flopping around. On the outside of the box, locate the junction box in a convenient spot and screw it in. I chose the upper left hand side. Use a few more harnesses to secure the wire as you route it to the junction box. To connect the dimmer switch, make a loop in the cord and pass it through one of the knockouts in the junction box. Give yourself plenty of cord to work with. We need to separate the conductors inside the junction box. With the cord looped inside the box, I have marked the section that needs to be split. Removing the wire from the box makes it easier. Be very careful not to cut into the actual copper wiring. Give yourself four or five inches to work with. When done, loop the cord and put it back into the junction box. Cut one of the loops in half, it doesn't matter which one. And strip the insulation about three quarters of an inch from each end. Using wire nuts, connect the two black wires coming out of the dimmer switch to each of the wires you have just stripped. Connect the ground, a green wire, to the junction box by one of the mounting screws. This is how the wiring should look when you are done. Nothing to it. Mount the dimmer switch to the box. Install a cover plate. Check to make sure everything works. And you're done. You now have a first class honey bucket heater. From a scrap 2x4, rip two or three half inch cross pieces and use these for supporting your honey bucket. Finally, to monitor the temperature, simply put a standard household thermometer in the bucket heater. With a little practice, you will be able to control the temperature very accurately, to within a degree or two. For extra credit in this project, Consider mounting some of these small plastic bumpers, or feet, on the bottom of your honey bucket heater. The ones that I am using simply screw in and only take a few moments. We are done with this project, a honey bucket heater. It's a gadget that I consider to be essential equipment in the honey house, and I bet you'll feel the same way too. I have used this heater for liquefying honey in the bucket, of course, but also for liquefying bottled honey that has crystallized, heating frames that are just a bit too chilled to spin out, and removing built-up wax from queen excluders. But I bet creative beekeepers out there will come up with other ideas. 
Thank you for joining me. It's been fun. I hope to see you again for our next project in the Beekeepers Workshop. Mm-hmm.